Um, let's say on line N of my um, attempt to go through this whole line inferencing, I have a, the biconditional um, A if and only if B. So I have the biconditional A if and only if B. And what I want to do is I want to see how much I can deconstruct this. This is just an example. So on O, what I'm able to do, immediately you should recognize that I can, on line N, use equivalence. On line N, I can use equivalence to change this form, right? So now I have, um, and I'm going to need space. Now I can have the following, right? If A, then B, and if B, then A. And my justification is I've applied equivalence to line N. So that O, now I have this, right? I have if A, then B, and if B, then A. What I can then do, just to break it down a little bit more, on line P, I can do what I just showed you uh, earlier. I can apply conjunction elimination. So on line O, I can get if A, then B, and my justification would be on line O, I've applied CE, right? On line O, I've applied conjunction and elimination to get A and B. But I can also get B and A, if B then A. So let's say on line Q, I, I say I isolate if B then A. And how was I able to do that? On line O, I was able to apply conjunction and elimination, and that got me if B then A. But not only that, you can break it down even further. And I'm not going to go through because there's, I mean, a very, very many, many steps. But this is good practice. This is something I would recommend you, you, you try doing yourself is to start with um, one line and see how much you can deconstruct um, the logic in that line. I'll go a little bit further, but not too much further. So we have N, O, P, Q. Let's say at line R, I wanted to use uh, material implication. Remember, what does material implication say? Um, and we got an idea of how this works from um, a few lectures ago in talking about truth trees. If I have if A then B, I can then say not A or, or B. Well, it's going to be the same. I'm going to be able to get um, not A or B from, from P. So from P, I'm able to get, uh, I use implication, and P-O. So on P, I use implication. And obviously I can use material implication on Q as well if I wanted to, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I have not B or A, and that would be uh, line Q uh, implication. So as you can see, there's a lot, and there's a lot, lot more that I can do with this. I can, I can start combining um, lines, I can start um, freeing up some of these variables. I can work this quite a bit. I don't, I'm obviously running out of space. I think uh, hopefully the point has been made um, that if given a line n and we have a statement, you can deconstruct that statement more and more by applying the rules. We've applied equivalence. We've con applied uh, conjunction elimination. We've applied material implication just to this one uh, by conditional. So we've gone from line n having if a, a if and only if B, um, to being able to derive um, if not B or A. Um, and the question is, how do I get to if not B or A from just this line? Well, I go through these different steps and I will be able to arrive at that conclusion. Um, as I said, this is a little bit more advanced. Uh, it requires a little bit more finessing, a little bit more time looking at sort of the logic um, that we've gone over before. But if you really think about it, hopefully it hasn't been uh, too difficult. It's sort of hard to do these lectures uh, via video. But what you should realize is all of this has been covered before. Conjunction elimination is nothing new, nothing difficult. We're just separating two, um, two different components of the conjunct. Um, equivalence is something that I just introduced. Uh, but all we're doing is we're translating this into a different form. Um, material implication is something that we, we had um, an initial insight into in our discussion of truth trees. 
Um, and I hope that you are able to see, for example, how starting from line N, A if and only if B, we're able to derive um, uh, not B or A. Uh, and if I were to write this uh, in a question, the question would be, given um, A if and only if B, I want you to arrive at not B or A. Um, and these are the steps that you would go through in order to arrive at that conclusion. Um, I, I hope that helps a bit. Uh, this will conclude my discussion, my introductory discussion on symbolic logic. After this, it gets uh, quite a bit more complicated, but hopefully these past you know, eight or nine or ten videos have given you the basis that you need in order to be able to do um, whole line inferencing uh, and be able to follow your argument uh, consistently. Appreciate you taking the time. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.